everybody and welcome back good to talk to all of you again today and today on this ship review episode I'm going to review the German tier 8 aircraft carrier the Graf Zeppelin I'm gonna try really hard not to swear because in the last couple of takes for this particular video within like 30 seconds I have delved into um, non PG 13 language so I'm gonna to try to keep this PG 13 We'll see how long this lasts. Okay, so the Graf Zeppelin. Um, really, really, we could just change the name of the ship. You know, we can call it the Craplin. We can call it the Shitlin. Oh wait, never mind. Whoops, language, language. Okay, sorry, sorry about that. Um, anyhow, um, the ship is awful, utterly, utterly awful. Now, the last time I previewed the ship, she had three torpedo bombers, and you guys remember at the time I said, okay, the three torpedo bombers is insanely strong. It's god-level striking power. But I also mentioned that the fighters were atrocious. And I said, okay, the fighters being as poor as they, they are, it's at least offset by the fact that you have this amazing strike potential. So if you're able to delay the enemy's fighters, you are going to be able to get in there and do damage. So that was okay. You know, it wasn't perfect, but it was okay. So then some developer at Wargaming must have looked at that and went, nah, that's too much strike power. We can't give players this much power. Let's take them all away and replace them with three RNGesus dive bomber squadrons. And then in their infinite wisdom, they give you three crappy dive bomber squadrons and don't buff the fighters. So now the, 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 the Zeppelin has no good fighters to contest any of the other tier 8 CVs and its strike power is abysmal. Utterly, utterly abysmal. I, I don't understand what the fuck was going on through their heads? Oh, wait, language again, language. What the hell was going through their minds when they thought this was a brilliant idea for a tier 8 CV that they were going to charge people 50 plus dollars for? What the hell? I mean, look at the fighters, right? They're, they're, they're fast, sure, 175 knots. You know, sure, when you compare it to the Shokaku, you're like, yeah, okay, Shokaku's planes are a little bit slower at 171, but... Look at the Shokaku's fighter durability, 2,092. Look at the Zeppelin's one, 1,991. There's a difference there. Then you look at the Shokaku and you go, okay, well, look at the loadout and the damage per second. Much higher damage, slightly less on the loadout, but look at the graph. You know, your damage is significantly lower. I have not been able to win a single fighter engagement against a, a decently played Shokaku ever since I've been testing the ship. Haven't won one. The Shokaku is able to run roughshod over your fighters, and once that's done, they just go straight back to kicking your team into the ground. Why? Because their strike power is more consistent because they've got torpedo bombers. Well, you're really just praying to R and Jesus to bless your dive bombers. Speaking of the Graf Zeppelin's dive bombers, the, there's only one version of the dive bombers that's playable, and that's the HE dive bombers. Why? Because... First of all, at least the HE damage is kind of high. Second, the drop circle is not stupid, right? You've got a nice circle where if you click, it'll drop into that circle, and you generally will get like one or two fires with the drop. So you can damage over time and, and screw over an enemy ship that way. So you send like one or two squadrons in, drop, get the damage over time, wait for them to burn their damage control, and then go in and send another two fires. It's at least workable. So the HE ones, you can kind of play around with. The AP ones are... I mean, the developer who, who thought this was a great idea for AP Dive Bomber seriously needs to be fucking fired from his job because this is incompetence beyond belief because it is... The system basically allows you to, to target a ship manually, okay? So, first of all, auto-bombing doesn't work because unless the ship is completely stationary, any ship that's moving, your bombs will never hit. So assume that you target it manually and you lead the enemy ship with some magical prediction skills that the ship is going to be there because the player down there is an idiot and will stay on a completely straight line without ever dodging. 
Assuming that is all true, you leave the target, drop the bombs, the drums get the bombs get dropped from the plane, and and nothing happens for like a bunch of seconds. You're literally sitting there going, okay, so cool, where's where's my bombs? Oh, oh, oh wait, no, there we go. Oh, there they are, finally they hit the water. And and by that time, if the enemy ship has half a brain cell, <laughs> they just pressed A or D or Q or E, and your bombs won't hit. So the AP bombs are basically worthless. So you're stuck basically with these HE dive bombers. So <laughs> you're, you're utterly worthless fighters and these bombers. That, that's, what, that's all you've got to play with. Why would anybody want to play this ship? It makes you want to tear your hair out. There's no point. Um, and yeah, so r really the, the carrier is just awful awful piece of total trash and whomever decided it was a great idea to release the ship now at whichever office did that seriously needs to be demoted or fired okay you guys got to put somebody better in charge when dealing with releases like this because this ship is a disaster it's a literal fucking disaster like i haven't seen wargaming screw up a ship this badly i mean the worst ship that they've ever released was the Krasny Krim, and I would rather play the Krasny Krim than play this piece of shit. Because even the Krasny Krim is at least decent. Right? At least it has its own merits there. This ship has nothing. Nothing at all. Anyhow. Alright. One good thing about the ship. Right. There is actually one good thing about the ship. Secondary guns. Yep. Y you heard me right. The one thing I have a glowing review about on the carrier is its secondary guns. That's it. That's the only good thing. Everything else about it is just bleh. AA is meh. Its speed, 32 knots, is not really any better than any of the other tier 8 CVs. Turning circle radius is not much better. Rudder shift is, well, okay. Fine, if you compare it to the Shokaku, it's, you know, pretty similar. If you compare it to the Enterprise, it's a little bit better. Sure, okay, rudder shift is alright. But then you look at the concealment, and you're like, it's 14.1. And that's with the concealment module. So you really need that concealment expert skill if you actually want to be somewhat stealthy. Otherwise, people are going to be shooting you from, well, quite a ways away. That's it. Graf Zeppelin. <laughs> Nothing really good about it i mean except outside of secondaries but your carrier why does secondaries even matter anyways uh gonna show you some battle footage because really that's just a good way to show you how the ship is and uh well get ready to um not wanna play the ship ever oh and for those of you who bought it um i'm really sorry I, I'm really sorry we couldn't get out content early enough for you guys to not buy this thing. And, um, yeah, I'd really suggest maybe you guys, like, send a ticket into Wargaming and, like, ask for a refund or something because the ship is just fucking terrible. Terrible. Terrible, 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 terrible. Just terrible. All right. On to battle footage. So, here I am uh, on the neighbor's map playing Graf Zep. Um And... I picked a battle that was sort of, I guess, average in terms of damage. Uh, right now, the average damage for me playing Graf is about, I think, around 70,000 damage a game. It's about nearly 20,000 lower than most of my other tier 8 CVs, I think. All right. So anyways, um, I did mention that the HE dive bombers are playable. You have three squadrons of them, and they are at least somewhat effective. <laughs> Keyword, somewhat effective against destroyers. When you have all three squadrons go after a destroyer, you are very likely to either cripple or kill the destroyer. So that is something that the HE dive bombers can do. And they are very, very sort of fire and forget kind of weapons, because you really could just click for the other drop. So that's what I'm going to do here against this uh, Akatsuki here. Actually, no, I might be manual dropping this one. 
Let me see here. Oh yeah, I did. Okay, so I just go for the manual drop. But you could, in theory, go for auto drop, and it's pretty effective. Now, as you can see, because you have the circle, like the perfectly good circle, um, you really could just click from any direction. You don't have to set up from behind. You don't have to set up from you know any specific direction. Just go in and go for the drop. So there we go. I was able to do some good damage there. 11,663 against the Akoski. That Akoski is almost dead and pretty much, I think, is going to get finished off pretty soon. Alright, so then once that's done, go ahead, uh, intercept some of these uh, other bombers with my uh, fighter. Enemy CV came after me for some reason. Why they would do that, I'm not really sure since, yeah, AS Lexington with two bomber squadrons. Really not going to do much, so, you know, go repair that. Then, of course, go back and engage those fighters. All right, so pretty straightforward so far, um, but yeah, like I said, the damage numbers for me in this game is with the, well with the graph as as a whole has been really all over the place. Um, I've had one game where I had close to one hundred sixty thousand damage, that being the Strike Lexington game that I mentioned earlier. So I yeah I, I got a good amount of damage there. I've had battles as low as twenty seven thousand damage. Uh, in a tier 10 battle. By the way, the, the Zeppelin does not do well in tier like 10 battles at all. I've had my bombers get devastated by Grosser Kurfürst AA. I kid you not. Grosser Kurfürst AA, so that's German A, was able to like rip my squadrons to pieces. Um, so, really, the graph is competent. Um, against tier up to like eight ships um tier nine you start to have problems tier 10 you know, well say goodbye to most of your planes by the 10 minute mark um not not fun not really fun at all anyhow with the he dive bombers the one thing you can do is exploit damage over time which means you go in you bomb and then you have a follow-up squadron that bombs, and another follow-up squadron that bombs. With three of these squadrons in a row, you should be able to do some pretty good damage. So here's a Ganai. Getting hit a little bit by my team, but take a look at what happens. There we go. Get the bomber squadron in. And hit the Ganai here. Blup. There we go. 2,000 damage. RN Jesus, for God's sake, sometimes. I mean, this is the thing I hate about dive bombers, it's inconsistent beyond belief. Like, sure, the circle is okay at times, but just, like, sometimes it's just so random. So random. I didn't even get fires out of those two squadrons. What? Anyhow, all right, generally speaking, I've, I, I have found, I'll be honest, I have found them to be reasonably okay with fires, although, again, it's an RNG kind of thing. But here's what you do. Hit them, hit them, and then hit them again. Three in a row. Get some fires there at the end. Alright, that Ganai is going to be mine. He is going to burn to death. Still, still only on like 20 some odd thousand damage. Yeah. It's going to take a while. And that's the thing that was really frustrating about the graph. You know, you went from very consistent damage platform with inconsistent fighters, but hey, at least you had a consistent damage platform. Now you've got neither. You've got garbage for fighters. That really, if you run into an enemy CV who has half an idea how to play their CV, your your fighters get outfought. I mean, I mean, really, you you really have to be like super unicum, top 0.01 percent of the population, and you run up against, you know, maybe a, a good CV player, basically not unicum, just somebody who's okay. Um, in that kind of situation, yeah, okay, sure, you might be able to. Say, all right, I'm gonna be able to do like quasi decently against them because, r realistically speaking, your fighters just don't cut it at all. They just don't. The enemy fighters just tear you to shreds. I mean, I had a, I had a head-on pass with a Shokaku, um, just head to head. We both strafed each other. I shot down one of the Shokaku's planes. He shot down three of mine. You can figure out that fight went. Uh, didn't go very well, and it's frustrating because you're, you're like, the the hell was that, right? Um, I've had times where I've caught dive bomber squadrons from behind, and I'm like, yeah, got them from behind. It should be all the planes, and no, 
No, sometimes I've had like three out of the squadron of like seven dive bombers just go s just survive, and it's just like what the. And it frustrates you as a player. It is just frustrating, and and the graph, I I just don't know. I I just don't understand where in whose mind this ship was like this is fine we can go with this like who came up with that I mean with the ship I'm at times at a loss of words to, to describe the ship um, just terrible 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 ship and it really I'm not kidding I it really makes me wonder what the hell was going on, you know, at Wargaming's development place? Like, what were the developers doing? Like, you know, they, they initially came up with 230, which, yeah, that's a little insane, right? That's a bit too much, but how did you go from that to this? On top of all that, your AP dive bombers don't really work. I mean, there's a clip coming up right now on your screen. This was the one time today that I was able to get the AP bombs to actually do something. And if you look at the enemy ship, you just realize that they had actually slowed down. Had they just kept going in a straight line and, you know, at max speed and then hit the turn after they saw my planes drop and turn away, they would have been fine. I mean, I got lucky with that kill because they stopped. So, yeah. I mean, yeah, that's that's the graph. Crappy fighters, RNG Jesus HE bombers, totally worthless AP dive bombers. <sighs> Just <sighs> what 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 a mess! What an absolute stinker! Of a ship and then somehow they think that they can charge money for it and get people to buy it I just I don't I don't even I, I, just, I don't even anymore I just I can't I, I this just doesn't make any sense seriously who whose decision that wargaming was like this is a great ship we should totally sell it in our current state like who 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 came up with this which genius in marketing thought that this ship was ready for release? I mean, I I would be shocked if within the next, you know, patch they don't buff the the ship more. I mean, I'm not even saying like you have to make it like broken like in the original state with that god tier striking power, but at least make the fighters usable. You know, uh, something. Ship needs some love. It really does. Because just in our currency, like like. Why would anybody buy this? Really, why would anybody buy this hunk of shit? Actually, on a side note, seeing the graph come out this way, you know, makes me really, really wonder if that the whole carrier balancing problem, the carrier mechanics and all that, those problems, I wonder if this is what's starting to, you know, manifest now. You know, you're starting to get to a point in the game where you know, the things I complained about, the game being too simple, the game not having enough mechanics to balance around, the mechanics being wrong, things like carriers being not fun. I'm wondering if these things are now starting to all come to a head as you see, you know, the new premium ships or whatever. They're going to get harder to balance. They're getting more iffy. You know, the new tech lines are getting ever more weird with gimmicks and stuff. And, and I'm starting to wonder if, like, the graph is just another one of those things that, that sort of signifies that problem. Anyways, final results screen, and uh, yeah, there we go. Uh, just four hundred twenty-five thousand, you know, sixty-seven, just under sixty-seven thousand damage. You know, second on the team there, one thousand six eighty-nine um, base experience. That was all right. Damage-wise, not really all that impressive. You know, just under sixty-seven thousand damage and carry carry just not. Not really anything to write home about, and credits are in 337,000 uh, after all deductions. And that's it for the Graf Zeppelin. Please do not spend your money on the ship. It is awful. Save your money. Anyways, folks, take care. Have yourselves a good one. And I'll talk to all of you again soon.